Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudey. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery, and assisted conception at the Homet and Fertility Centre in London. So today, I'm going to talk to you about cesarean section scar defects and its impact on fertility. So let's have a look at this article. How do we manage cesarean scar defects? And what is its prevalence? So what is it? And it is a depression seen at the cesarean section site. You can call it a cesarean section scar defect. You can call it cesarean scar dehiscence. Call it isthmocele. You can call it uterine transmural hernia, diverticulum pouch formation, niche or utero peritoneal fistula. So there are many names by which you could call it. Now, if you look at the incidence of cesarean section, it has increased. About 20% of women undergo cesarean section. And cesarean section scar defect is one of the complications of cesarean section. So have a look at across the world how cesarean sections have increased. And from 1990 to 2014, there has been a phenomenal increase in cesarean section rates. So what is the risk for cesarean section scar defects? And two studies, if you have one cesarean section, it goes up to 61% and it steadily keeps on increasing with three cesarean sections. And what are the risk factors? The risk factors could be prolongation in labor, peripartal partum infections, increased BMI. If cesarean section is performed later on in labor, a very low scar for cesarean section and you you put a scar closer to the uterocycle pouch and there's six times higher chance of cesarean section scar defects. Again, with suturing, we are not certain and it seems whether you do a single uh, you know, a level closure or a double level closure, it doesn't seem to make a huge difference. Now, a large number of women with cesarean section scar defects are asymptomatic may later on present as a scar dehiscence or rupture or the adherent placenta. Endometriosis can come up on the scar. There could be retention of blood in the, the defect and an inability to, of the myometrium to expel. And that's probably the commonest thing that we see in symptomatic CSD. The risk of infertility varies from 4% to 19%. And if there is fluid collected in the cavity, and the lower endometrial thickness, which is very small, may be associated with a slightly higher risk of a complete rupture of the uterus. So how do you diagnose it? And you can do a transvaginal scanning with or without saline, and probably that could give you a much better way of diagnosing it. Now, cesarean section scar, which are defined as indentation, which is to a depth of greater than or equal to two millimeter, they could be simple or branched, MRI could be useful, and the hysteroscopy, you could visualize the entrance of the isthmus. How do you manage it? Now, if is there a role of medical management? And again, there's limitations to medical management. And if you want to prevent recurrent bleeding, you can put estrogen or progesterone tablets or patches, and the evidence is very small. Myrena can be inserted, uh, if the menstrual symptoms tend to get worse. Surgical is also complicated. And you can either try to do surgical or depending on severity of symptoms. A hysteroscopic surgery has been tried. But remember, hysteroscopic surgery does not completely close the defect. And you resect the superior inferior edges and the, the defect is fulgurated, electrocoagulated. The success rate is varied between 59 and 100 percent. And in fact, if you have a retroverted uterus, and you can imagine, its, more, its failure rates are significantly higher. And in fact, some studies have shown no difference. You can also try laparoscopic surgery, in which you explore the, the pelvis in addition to the defect. You dissect the bladder. You completely expose the fibrotic area and you do a double lower, uh, layer closure. You can also apply it to a round ligament. Now the cutoff residual myometrial tissue should be less than 3.5, which means it should be, we should be able to exceed that. 
and the mean residual myometrial uh, tissue was uh, more than 10 millimeter in that review which was done by Donne. So the recurrence rates after the CSD defects in multiple studies range between 1.6% to 33%. So there's a variation of recurrence. If a woman is symptomatic, then it's surgery does relieve symptoms and it varies between 64 and 100% again. And in about the proportion of patients, whatever you do, the, the symptoms continue. And when should a patient try for a pregnancy? Usually three to six months after surgery and the take-home baby rate varied between 21% and 75%. Hysterectomy was a final option. Now again, if you look at vaginal repair, you can combine it with laparoscopy, bladder is dissected, the defect is visualized, and you can either do a single closure and a vaginal closure. It has low complication rates and the restoral myometrial thickness measurement is significantly increased and it goes from less than 3.5 millimeter to anything between 5.6 and 10 millimeter. Persistent defects are noticed between 13 and 37 percent of cases and a pregnancy rate of around 39 percent has been seen and that's one study. So if you look at this graph they've given a split into how you deal with uh, the scar defect and how do we pursue. So in conclusion we would say a, a scar, cesarean section scar defect or uh, isthmocele or a niche you should suspect if you see continuous spotting in those women who've had a cesarean section, if you see dysmenorrhea, if you see pelvic pain, or if it's accompanied by infertility. First and foremost, do a transvaginal scan and then an MRI. And a symptomatic CSD, asymptomatic CSD should not be treated. Infertility, again, it's difficult. If you're asymptomatic, we still do not know its role in causing scar dehiscence or rupture in the future. And if surgery is planned, then the residual myometrial thickness is the key factor. The thicker you can get the residual myometrial thickness or RMT is the best option. And laparoscopy and vaginal repair seem to be the best options. You could also combine it with a hysteroscopic resection, but that's more to be incomplete. So that's in short about cesarean section scar defects and those of us who do fertility practice will see a large proportion of these patients coming in again and often we don't know what to do and if they are asymptomatic and if you can control the blood in the cavity uh, uh, these cases should be left without being treated. Thank you very much. If you like, like these videos do share them and send them a you know, and let people have a look and let's spread evidence-based medicine. Thank you very much.